Uh, it's Bernie Goldbach on Sunday, the 30th of September, looking at FT Weekend. It's a Sunday news round from my back garden in Ireland. Uh, lots of stuff throughout this paper deal with the Financial Times, and it deals with a lot of stuff about China. Indirectly, Toy Supplier Hooks Forgers, a product, product protection piece by Jonathan Moles, looks at the company behind Air Swimmer, something that we never bought last year, something I really like. Richard North says his company, Wow Stuff, spent 150000 sterling on legal support. He discovered that they used to be among the 100 fastest growing companies in the UK last year. They would have retained that achievement if it had not lost sales on their Air Swimmer to um, counterfeiters. And like, a lot of this stuff's being done, being made uh, illegally in China. He's taken it to the legal side of the house to win a case. Inside the paper, several different places, do more to entice the dragon, Aaron Simpson writes. He points out that Germany-China bilateral trade probably going to reach $284 billion in the next five years, contrasting starkly to the $100 billion uh, for UK-China trade. And he points out why a lot of this is happening. It's down to a, a visa system, which makes it appear, at least to the sur on the surface, that um, England remains an island nation. I think Ireland faces the same thing as a common travel area. We have to see. With a rationality over property taxation, Ireland's going to face a property tax. Jonathan Ely points out, which you'd expect in the, in the Financial Times, that mansion taxes, which they're talking about in Ireland as well, is bad ideas. One reason is because it won't raise much money. And once the paltry tax revenues became apparent, become apparent, you can bet the definition of what a mansion is will change. Right now, a one million euro home in Dublin is a lot smaller than what you'd find down the country. And then there's this philosophical issue about property. If you penalize top-end home ownership, and then you help, at the bottom, people to get on the ladder, it seems like an irrational kind of a thing. Tax policy caught in a, in a pincer-like grip, one side or the other. Ryder Cups providing a lot of interesting suspense in, uh, in uh, Ireland and uh, throughout Europe. Uh, I mean, it's it's great play, being played in Chicago right now. Great uh, the way the, the um, it's great the way it's playing out. I'm seeing I'm seeing it on the Sky Sports in places all around uh, different pubs here in Chicago where I live. Front page about Apple Maps. Tim Cook, Apple's chief executive, has become their chief apologist. And this is a funny story, sort of, about how investment being wooed from China in Toledo is also running up against uh, Romney. And Obama, the two presidential candidates, saturating, saturating the local television market, slamming cheaters like China. <laughs> I said, China runs through the paper a lot more than I'm used to seeing. Inside this paper, some interesting stories. Life after Ted in the life and arts section. An article uh, written by um, April Dombotsky, who reports on, uh, she gives a photo montage of Ted in the WWW conference which is what's followed on from Richard Saul Worman's uh, original TED idea. Now, Worman originally formed TED by subtracting elements common to other conferences, such as introduction, lecture, and suits and ties. He took away CEOs who legally can't tell the truth and politicians who can't tell the truth because they serve so many constituencies. And then, you know, he got a lot of um, prognosticators and visionaries, but now too many things have become rehearsed, edited, rehearsed again. Spontaneity is gone. Lots of selling of charity. There's the selling of being PC. And then the article evolves or writes about what's evolving. The deep wow moments coming out of the intellectual jazz it used to be all about. Ted are gone. I go to the LA Public Library, a loud podcast. I read a lot of the Atlantic where I get my wows from. I do a lot of long form reading. And as they go through life after Ted, some interesting things about women, um, you know, women directors that don't seem to make it. I'd bring someone like Dervla Hanley into the mix or Martha Rotter or Gina Trapani. Ted's running out of speakers, they're running out of ideas, they resorted to reality television strategies, hosting a series of American Idol type of auditions, and then they interview Matt Mullenweg behind um, WordPress, he bought a ticket, actually bought a ticket, I sent him back probably what, $10,000, and over the course of the conference he ordered 14 books from different people, speaking at the conference, good on you Matt, I read books too, I also like Longwood Gardens, you would too. Sancho deserves to mention this. I mean, right now, Longwood, it's got all this lovely fall colors. We go to Longwood when we're back in Philadelphia, in our Philadelphia area, from Lancaster County, Pennsylvania. Dad and Mom used to walk that garden all the time. Stuff I love. Jeez, stuff I love about it. Um, the highest horticultural standards 
in the world delighting visitors throughout the year that visit those gardens and now at nightfall the gardens been illuminated all summer long by hundreds of thousands of artistic lights set up by the British light artist Bruce Mun Munro love it art lighting is going to be the next big thing what do you think Peter Dunnigan it will counter the yellow sodium glare of street lights advancing across England's green belt God, I could use that here think about backlighting this thing maybe make an up light that's pink pink birch tree at night what do you think Hey, here we go. Two pages about Apple, sort of. Foxconn rolls with the punches. That's Terry Gu, the man behind Foxconn. Mr. Gu, nearly, nearly 62, oversees the largest private employer in China and the world's biggest contract electronics manufacturer revenues. But I find it tough moving to Mexico or Brazil. A lot, lot more militant there. Apology takes the brand into uncharted waters, writes Tim Bradshaw about Apple. Coming a week before the first anniversary of the death of Steve Jobs, the contrast to Mr. Cook's contrition over the Maps app and Jobs' often arrogant response to customer complaints could not be marked, more marked. Yeah, maps are beautiful, aren't they? They are beautiful, but not necessarily functional. You can read more about it on Walter Higgins' Magic Maps blog post if you're interested. Contract Cook and list arrivals help to bring users back on track. Mr. Cook suggested customers continue using Google Maps through a web app as well as other alternatives such as Nokia's Maps. Excellent. While Apple works on, the mis on correcting the mistakes, it's going to be years before they correct those mistakes, really. Years. That's good news for Ireland, not to hire people, perhaps in Cork. This is what I'm going to be doing about this whole topic. I'm going to be watching The Last Train Home again. And I'll tell you, it's a really good film by Lixin Fan. You can get it too, The Last Train Home, through uh, dogwolf.com. Excellent stuff. Opening up societies such as China. You know, view you're rarely going to see. It actually should be on RT, actually. And it should be in Kindle as well. This came through my Kindle. My Kindle got updated. New fonts, parental controls, Kindle 8 format, comic books, children's picture books, whisper sync for voice. We're going to try all these things. Setting me back more in the purchase and download of audio and textual content than I will spend on apps or on my garden. If you're going to watch in here, Peter, you'll be coming here. Cash and Marie, help me clean this place up before we go talk to kids about getting their voice and their gardening tools ready to explain the joys of gardening in Ireland. I'm Bernie Goldbach. Views of this birch tree will change next few weeks. You can see them emerging at flickr.com stroke Irish eyes. Thanks for watching and listening. I'm on www.insideview.ie for the rest of the story. Or Top Goat on Twitter. Bye for now.